here. These are all realities of the kingdom. But the year that my son was born, 1986, I was praying for the meetings where Chico was coming. And for some reason, I, was, I would pray about four hours a day. And I would sit in this big chair, and as I would pray, after a few weeks of prayer, I was very aware that the glory of God, like a river, was slowly going higher and higher. Now I'm sitting in a chair, and I could see it. Every day I'd pray, it'd get a little higher. So when I'd come back, the river was here, and then I'd pray, it'd get a little higher. This is revival I'm talking about. This is what happens. It, you, you don't pray the river comes, you come back the next day, you can't find it. No. Revival is when it continues and continues. And it literally got about here, and I got afraid. I woke up one morning, I'm sitting, and the river's here. And I'm literally sitting like this. And I'm thinking, God, if the river goes over my head, I don't know what's going to happen because I will be completely out of control. Like, it, it scared me. And I sat there like this. I said, God, it's going to go over my head, and I'll have no control. I mean, I'm going to be out of control. I, like, I, don't, even, I don't know what's going to happen. What's going to, what is that going to look like? And God said, that's the whole purpose of the river, is rivers to swim in. That when the river goes over your head and your feet can't touch the ground, you've got to go where the river goes, not where you want to go. The whole purpose of the river is to take you where God wants you to go, and you stop going where you want to go. And a lot of people are in the river, but their feet touch the bottom, and they go where the river goes. Oh, God is good, I'm telling you. And so I was sitting there. I had three open visions, three. I, they are my life-defining visions for Canada. Three life-defining visions. And the first one, I, um, God, God spoke to me, uh, pardon me, God took my head up into heaven. So how does he take your head into heaven? I don't know, I was still sitting down. As soon as the river went over my head, you guys, my head was in heaven. But I was still in the chair. How does it work? I don't know. And don't try to figure it out. It doesn't matter. My head was in heaven, and I watched the scene in heaven. And I knew that it was looking at a scene that happened after the return of Christ. So can you imagine? My head's in heaven. Now, can I tell you something about heaven? I, when I was with Jedediah in, in, on November, uh, December the 3rd, 2004, Jedediah Tamp, the heavens opened, and God showed me about Indonesia and what was about to happen. Like, they literally opened, and God told, showed me the different prints about what God was doing. But you know how normal it was? I, it was normal. I, I, I always wondered, you know, when they looked into heaven and saw heaven open, what it, it was like, we're born for this. This is our home too. That's our home. I, my citizenship is in heaven. I felt like home. Now, obviously, was it supernatural? Yes. But it was like, it was just, you know, I lived there too. And it opened up and God showed me what was about to happen. And when God put, popped my head up into heaven, I was looking at a scene that would occur after the return of Christ. And it was the, a wonderful reality of heaven, not a doctrine, a reality of a doctrine. Did you hear that? Not a doctrine, a reality of a doctrine. I live for the reality of the doctrine. If your doctrines are not realities, they do you no good. Your doctrines must become realities. God wants to show you his glory, not tell you about his glory. And I looked and I saw the nations coming before the throne of God. In a wonderful parade. Oh, it looked like a parade. And one nation had just come before the, the throne. The throne was on my right side. You know how big the throne is? I couldn't see the top of the base of the throne. I couldn't see it. It went so high. God's throne is a mountain. It's not a little chair on a platform. Did you know that God's throne is a mountain? The mountain of the Lord. I mean, when the Bible says, and in the midst of the throne are four living creatures, how do you think God puts four big living creatures in a chair? I mean, it's, it ain't going to work. There's not enough room. You ever think about that stuff? I do. It's a mountain. And I saw the nation, a nation, just a tail end. And it looked like a, it, you know the Olympics when the nations come in? I think that's what it looked, except way better. And I heard this voice, here comes Canada. That's what I heard. And here come Canada. And they're all dressed in go figure, reds and whites. And that was it. And you guys, in Canada, you want to know, in heaven, do you want to know a secret? Now, you may already know this. I saw it. I'm going to give you an eyewitness testimony, what I saw in heaven. Everybody was dancing. Everybody. If you don't dance now, you will. 
and you don't need a choreographer because it was all, ah, it was all arms and legs and, 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 ah, and people were just happy that they were in heaven. And the atmosphere was charged with joy because that's the atmosphere of heaven. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Isn't that wonderful? In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. I saw fullness of joy. And, and let, you want to know another secret? Now, some of you may have a hard time like I did, but I saw it. In heaven, you will esteem others better than yourself. Because I saw a guy who was just having a, himself a party before God, and he looked away over there, and he saw his neighbor that he didn't even know was a Christian. And he was like, you made it to heaven too? Ah! And he was rejoicing more for him than himself. Now, that's hard, that's hard for us to handle because we're selfish by nature and we think it's all important the all-important salvation is us that's very important <laughs> but you know what Paul said I'm willing to be cut off for the sake of my people the Jews Lord cut me off and he meant it Moses said the same thing God blot me out of the book then take your people don't kill them blot me out and you know what he meant it he esteemed others this is the kind of love. You want to know why God used Paul? That's why he used Paul. You want to know why he used Moses? That's why. Because of the love.